At Octave, one of the things that we recommend for newbies is that they take what they're already doing and put it on the chart. And so most people in the field are generally starting with something like discrete trials. So we're gonna show you how to chart some discrete trials. All right, Amy, are you ready? I'm ready. I've got the chart here. Go ahead. Sounds good. So we're going to talk about discrete trials. And first we'll talk about like, let's say I'm running uh, some mass trialing or I'm doing a 10 minute sit down session with my learner and we're working on matching or some other task. So we're going to have a consistent record floor of 10 minutes. So my first day I, I go in and I deliver 10 trials to my learner and they get six correct and four errors. Show us how to chart that, Amy. You're gonna come down here and find your 10 minutes. And that's where you're gonna chart your record floor using a little dash here. And then that gets multiplied by six. So then you're gonna put your six right here and your four right here. And that's your six dots and your X for your incorrects with your record floor right at the bottom. Okay, so what's a record floor? The record floor is essentially a little a little tick mark, a little bar. I call it the counting time bar sometimes. And that just tells you how long you are observing for. So you can have all different observation periods and still chart your data on the chart. So the next day you come in and they get eight correct and two errors. What does that look like? Okay, I'm zooming in a little bit more. So same record floor, eight correct right up here and two errors would be right here. So you can see that the X's are coming down and the dots are going up. So you can actually see that their accuracy is improving. So how long are we gonna do this? Like what's our criteria on this? So assuming you're doing 10 trials a day, then you're always gonna be looking for accuracy with your discrete trials. And you're also gonna be looking for 10 corrects. So there's a few different ways you could set your aim, but you could set your aim where 10 correct would be, which would be right around the one per minute if you're doing 10 minute timing, or you take your aim and put it down below where essentially zero incorrects would be somewhere down here and that's how you know you want your x's to land in the yellow below the record floor okay well what if i'm not sitting down for 10 minutes and i'm teaching across maybe a three hour session. So a lot of people are interspersing their trials throughout their, their sessions with their learners. So let's talk about how to chart that. So day one, we go in and again, we're still, maybe we're controlling for how many trials we're gonna do with our learners and maybe we're not. In my practice, I like to control for it because it gives my RBTs the information that they need and it also ensures that they're getting enough trials in. So I'm gonna say to my RBTs, I want 20 trials a day interspersed across three hours. So on that first day, let's say out of the 20, they got 14 correct and six errors. Okay, so for that three hour counting time, there's a few different ways to do it. You can kind of guesstimate based on looking over here at the hours, you've got three hours is right in between two hours and four hours. So you can kind of guesstimate that you're gonna be somewhere around here for your record floor. And we're just gonna point an arrow over there. But if you do the math, or if you memorize exactly where that's gonna be, then it's actually gonna be right here. So that would be your three hour counting time. Then you take whatever that number is and you multiply that by 14. So I'm gonna do that really quick for our 14 correct. That's gonna put us right here Okay, and this is the part that I love about the chart is you can have different counting times and it'll account for that change. So you can still see that there, you can still look at the count per minute and compare those two data points, even though you have different counting times. And you can see on the chart that something was different that day because your record floor is gonna be in a slightly different spot. It's just gonna be right up here, a little bit higher. So now we're gonna take our 16 and put that up here for would go right here. So it shows just a little bit different. You can still see that a few things decreased. You still got dots going up, X is going down, but you also have that information down below that shows you that you had a different counting time. And I love that you have access to all that data in the same spot. So how does that impact your mastery criteria? So again, if you wanna put a visual aim on the chart, you would just put it kind of below where your record floors are. And if they bounce around a little, it shouldn't make a big difference. What you're gonna look for is for your X's to land somewhere around this range below the, the record floors or the counting time bars. I'm Amy. And I'm Liz. 
And we are Octave Innovation. We teach people how to implement precision teaching, get their stuff that they're already doing. If you do discrete trials or natural, naturalistic teaching, we teach you how to get that on the chart and bring precision teaching into what you already do. So check out the link below. We have offerings for individual practitioners as well as for organizations setting up systems, et cetera.